So, you don't wanna to go to college, you wanna make at least six figures a year or maybe a whole lot more. You don't need that high of an education. You don't need to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on a degree, especially if you're interested in skilled trades. I can show you some stuff that has worked really, really well for me and I'm sure it'll work well for you. So a little background to my experience, my education. I'm a mechanic by trade. Back in 2000, 2001, I went to Universal Technical Institute for Automotive and Diesel Technology. I did not complete the school. I left school to pursue a different type of career, made a lot of money in it. Finally had my first mechanic job in 2003 or 4 at a Mack truck dealership working on 18-wheelers. I went from 18-wheeler shop to 18-wheeler shop to an automotive shop to an automotive Volkswagen dealer to the city of Fort Worth where I worked on cop cars and police cars and all of their light duty vehicle stuff. I got promoted, went over to their heavy duty stuff, worked on fire apparatus, which is fire trucks and big fire trucks, small fire trucks, things of that nature and street department stuff. Went from there, then I became a mechanic that worked in the oil field, working between 70 to 90 hours a week on call for about five, six years. 2014, I was the world's worst employee, so they fired me at the company that I was working at and decided I had enough working for people and I'm going to work for myself. So in 2014, I started a mobile automotive repair company, started working on cars, just anywhere they were at, which quickly turned in from cars to trucks and then trucks somehow to heavy equipment. Got on the heavy equipment train and then I really started making all the money. So my biggest suggestion for you, if you're in this industry and you want the biggest opportunity you can possibly imagine being a mechanic, get into diesels and heavy equipment. You don't have flat rate, you don't have flag hours, and it works out tremendously better. If you don't know what flat rate and flag hours are, let's say you have this Chevy pickup, it comes into your shop, and it needs a water pump. There is a flat rate for this water pump. It's about two, two and a half hours. From book time, that's what I'm gonna charge you. That's what most shops are gonna charge you, two and a half hours. If you're a mechanic that works for me, and I tell you it's a two and a half hour job, I pay you 20 bucks an hour, two and a half hours, you get about $50 to do this job. That's it. If the bolts snap off and you have all the problems in the world and you're on your phone too dang long, then I'm not out anything. You're out of the time. I'm waiting for you to finish the truck. It's 50 bucks for the job. So diesel, most diesels and heavy equipment do not have flat rate. It's just by the hour. Now I'm going to show you how years ago, I made $235,000 in one year just by simply working on excavators, skid steers, and some forestry equipment. So the first and foremost, I don't care what your level of experience is. Now you don't want to start working for yourself and being a full line mechanic for, you know, especially automotive, um, a mobile mechanic or anything. You need to have a little bit of experience. Hopefully you've got a shop in your town that you can apply for. If you want to know how to get the job, I have several videos talking about that. I'm going to start a new series for you guys. Something along the lines of um, how to get in the industry, how to get your first customer, and all that jazz. But let's say you have about a year experience, so you kind of know what you're doing. You're going to start doing jobs that you're, you're geared to do. You're probably not going to be able to afford a huge crane truck or a huge service truck or anything. So only do the easy jobs. You're going to do water pumps, batteries, alternators, um, water pumps on the things that aren't driven off the timing belt unless you're competent enough to do the timing belt, fuel pumps, really light duty stuff to where you can make a lot of bread and butter money. There's really no need to do heavy duty stuff in the field if you're going to start off as mobile. Now, I will caution you, you have to got to fight the urge to cheapen your labor rate and not charge what you're capable of charging. If you're doing mechanic work, in my opinion, anywhere in America, you should be charging $100 an hour, at least. I know a lot of you guys are like, oh my gosh, my area won't support that because blah, blah, blah. If your area won't support that, it's because you've been charging people cheaper rates and you've been attracting a certain type of customer, the cheaper rate coupon kind of style of customer. I know because I did it. I started off at $50 an hour. I got $50 an hour quality people. I went up to $100 an hour or 98 bucks an hour. All of a sudden I started getting better people because the people who are willing to spend $100 an hour on their equipment on the vehicle or whatever know the game and they just want their stuff fixed well. So it's very easy to get in the $100,000 area to in the mobile world or any kind of mechanic world if you're working for yourself. So you take $100,000 
And for simplicity, we're gonna pretend there's only 50 weeks in a year. I understand there's 52 weeks in a year, but just for keyboard math and chalkboard math, because I'm an idiot and I don't know how to do math in my head, we're gonna say 100,000. So 100,000 divided by 50 is 2,000, all right? So you need to make $2,000 a week to equal your $100,000 year job. Sounds like a lot. It's really not that much because out of that $2,000, you're going to make about probably $700 to $700 profit on just your parts. So $500 in parts is your profit. And I charge 30% markup. Most chart, most shops charge 30% markup. And if you're not familiar with what that is, you take a hundred dollar part that this is what it cost you. You add thirty dollars onto that. You have a hundred and thirty dollar part. You keep the thirty dollars, so you made thirty dollars on that part. So let's say every single week you made a profit of at least five hundred dollars on your parts, your oil anything that you buy for the vehicle and i don't care how small it is the smaller stuff like a can of brake clean and a tube of rtv you charge a 20 dollar shop supply fee my shop supply fee has gone up to about 40 dollars because i don't use anything cheap so you have your 500 dollars from your 2000 that gives you $1,500 a week that you need to come up with. I understand a lot of you guys may not have been able to make $1,500 or even $1,000 or even $800 a week or 500. This seems like an unobtainable number, but remember we're charging at $100 an hour. So $100 an hour, that's 1,500. Well, I just did that completely wrong. So we'll go 1,500 divided by $100 an hour is only 15 hours of labor a week. If you're a mechanic and you cannot perform 15 hours worth of work a week, then you are definitely 100% in the wrong business. You can get 15 hours a week at 100 bucks an hour doing very, very simple jobs like serpentine belts, a radiator, brakes, rear brakes, and get right here at that 1500 and then if you do your math, hundred thousand dollars very very easy if you double that so let's say you went to thirty dollars an hour or thirty hours you take thirty multiply it by a hundred you made three thousand dollars a week and you still don't even have a full-time job it's still only thirty hours a week of actual labor that you put into something and there's all kinds of ways as an as a mobile equipment mechanic a mobile automotive mechanic you are mobile, so when you go to the job, your customer says, I don't know, there's this horrible noise coming from the front of my car. It needs front brake pads, it needs rotors. You put calipers on it. Where do you get that stuff from? You tell the customer, I have to go to whatever store, get the parts, pick them up, bring them back. You charge at least $2.50 a mile. So $2.50 covers your, your personal time and the mileage on your vehicle to get to and from there. You are a mobile setup. I do not care what Jiffy Lube is charging people. I don't care what Midas is charging people. Pep Boys does not make any difference at all what anybody else is charging that's not doing mobile repair. You're mobile, you are bringing a convenience to your customer. Fight the inner urge to try to, I need to help out this customer. You need to be upfront with the customer. When they call you for a job and they ask you, hey, my car, my blah, blah, blah is here, what would you charge to do it? You tell them, I charge $100 an hour and $2.50 a mile. You can adjust the 250. Me personally, right now, I charge 350 a mile and I get away with it, but I normally work on... That was weird. There was literally an Aventador that just came out of the Dollar General and drove off. A Lamborghini Aventador, which is like a two hundred and eighty thousand dollar car. <laughs> so you, so I charge three fifty a mile, and I suggest at least two fifty a mile. Doing automotive work is going to be a little harder to do this, but you just be upfront with your customer. You are not interested in doing anything else for other for their customer if they're not willing to pay this price. If they say, oh, well, Midas charges $99 for a front axle brake job, go fantastic. Go take a car to Midas, they'll do it. 
probably maybe a decent job. So don't worry about that. I highly suggest you guys get into like diesel pickups and diesel equipment. There's a ton of smaller diesel equipment out there. Skid steers, small tractors, little excavators, things that you don't need a crane truck to work on and you do very simple jobs. You tell people, I do not do motor swaps. I do not do pump swaps. The only thing that I will do in the field are hydraulic leaks, um, no starts, headlights, air conditioning work, small, really quick electrical jobs, and people will gladly give you that work. Now they will always ask, hey, I've got this over here. Um, there's a hole sticking out the side of the engine block. I'll give you two grand if you'll swap the motor. And that's up to you if you wanna do that. I highly suggest that you don't. If you're not tooled out and equipped to do it, don't jump off into that job because you don't have the equipment, the experience, the tools, the knowledge, or whatever. Now, if you do happen to do this method, and you break it all down and you're charging at least a hundred bucks an hour three dollars a mile or 250 a mile whatever you want to do 30 percent markup on parts and you pigeonhole some of that money and you save and you get you a nice crane truck you know a decent crane truck that's used you can find a decent crane truck for 10 to twenty thousand bucks sounds like a lot of money but remember when you're making a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars in a year you need to spend some money on something and if you don't old uncle sam's gonna take a big nasty chomp out of that so you need to get with your cpa and spend some money on your equipment and everything and you can build a massive industry and business off doing this relatively quickly the best things that i've ever done in my life for advertising is word of mouth tell everybody and anybody that you're a mobile mobile mechanic tell everybody and anybody that you're a mobile mechanic what type of stuff you're working on that you're working on uh, vehicles if you go to church Go to church, tell everybody at church what you're doing. Church is a fantastic place for people to advertise for you. Everyone is always looking for a good honest mechanic that's not out to rip them off. And it's just, it's very, very simple. Me personally, when I'm blowing and going and trying to do mobile work now, I shoot for about 30 hours a week. That's it. That's all I'm interested in doing. Really, I want 20 hours a week is all I'm trying to get. I don't need any more money than that. I'm not need. I don't need to be rich. I don't need to go get a Rolex. I don't need to go buy the brand new diesel power stroke hundred thousand dollar truck to make me look good i don't need any of that crap whittle down your cost of you just need a couple of grand a week or 1500 bucks a week that's more money than most people make anyway and you're going to do a fantastic job so you don't have to have fancy scan tools fancy equipment to do any of that stuff you just be honest with your customer if they have a caterpillar bulldozer and say hey i got to check engine light on can you come out and hook up to it say, nope I don't have a diagnostic tool, but I can come out and do your PM. I can change your oil. I can do the hydraulic leak. I can do, I can get that AC fixed for you. I can blow out your coolers and everything. And then they're like, oh, okay. They'll keep you in mind and you, that's how you get your job. The best advertisement I ever did was at church. The wrap job that I had on my truck, it was a $3,000 wrap job. Paid itself off in about two weeks. It's fantastic. Had no issues with it. And it just kept going and going and going until YouTube took off. And I made a decent amount on YouTube. Now I never, I've never made as much money on YouTube as I did with heavy equipment repair because to give you like a quick rundown of my best year that I ever did doing heavy equipment was $235,000 in one year. Okay, sounds like a lot of money. It is a lot of money. And I got to break out the old calculator. So 235,000. Divided by, I charge 125 bucks an hour, is 1,880 hours. So you take 1,880, divide that by 52 weeks in a year, and you're at about 36 hours. Now, it's not just 36 hours. I just did that as a really quick synopsis of everything, because on top of all of this, I bought parts, profited from the parts, and mileage so i would venture to say i probably averaged around 25 hours a week for 52 weeks a year and took several weeks off in between i'd work one two weeks blowing and going and then i would take off for a week or two because i just did not need to make that much money one of the best things i ever did in my life and if you have any kind of takeaway from this work for yourself Schedule your time to work for one to two weeks, really, really hard, blow and go, do really, really good, and then take off an equal or more time than you worked. If you work three days, take off five days. If you work one week, take off two weeks. Because if you make 2,000, 3,000 bucks in a week, 
that should be able to float your lifestyle for several weeks. I understand the cost of living and everything is different everywhere, but if the cost of living is higher where you're at, you charge accordingly. If you need to figure out how much to charge, call some guys up in the industry in your area. Tell them you have whatever kind of thing you're gonna be working on. Hey, I've got a Caterpillar skid steer I need a starter put on. How much would you charge me to come out? And people will tell you, well, I charge 100 an hour. I charge, you know, $6 a mile. I charge $247,000 an hour, whatever it is. You call six or seven different mobile guys to find out what they're charging, and that's how you figure out what you should charge. You should be charging whatever the people in your field are charging the same amount. If you want to be a little bit cheaper, that's fine but don't try to be the bargain basement. I'm gonna cut you a deal because I did that and it will bite you in the butt and it'll get you the worst kind of clients you've ever had that you can imagine. So I hope explaining this stuff to you guys shows you at least the math portion of what you can possibly make and you don't have to work 50, 60, 90, 120 hours to make this kind of money. Your goal in my opinion should be to only work about 20 hours a week and still make more money than you could ever make at any shop and be much more less stressed. Get up in the morning whenever the hell you want. When I was doing it, I really, really enjoyed working at night because I live in Texas. It's really freaking hot during the middle of the summer in Texas. I would only show up to jobs at 6, 7 p.m. at night, work at night. I'd have all my parts on hand. Nobody was there to bother me. Their equipment would be working and going by the morning. They were happy, I was happy. Worked out for everybody. But your goal to me should be working less, not more for more money. Always try to work less for the maximum amount of money. And if you're a mechanic, you wanna be a mechanic, this is gonna net you more money and more profit than any other degree out there. And if you think I'm kidding with you, think I'm lying to you, sit down right now, pull up Google, put an average cost for a medical degree and what the average doctor makes. The average doctor makes about 120 to $135,000 a year. The average medical debt is $250,000 a year. That 250,000 is gonna take you about 10 to 15 years to pay off if you pay it off relatively quickly. Then you can start making a profit. In the meantime, when you're a mechanic and you've already been making 100, $150,000 a year with almost zero investment other than maybe 20, $30,000 in some tools, you're gonna make a lot more profit over the long term than people with degrees can. I'm not saying that degrees are evil and you should, no one should have a degree. If you're passionate about what you do and you know what your passion is, your passion is to be a doctor, your passion your whole life has been to be a lawyer and that's what you're interested in and you would do it for $16 an hour or you could do it for $60 an hour or $600 an hour. The price didn't matter because that's just what you wanted to do then go get your degree and it's fine. But if that's not you, there's other ways to make money. Do not get a degree because you think that's gonna be the way you're gonna be a millionaire with that degree, because it's not. It's never gonna equal that. That's just not how it works. Hope you guys liked the video. I'm gonna make some more videos about how to get customers, how to talk to customers, where to source parts from, how to get parts and all that coming up in a series. It'll be in a playlist. Kinda help you guys because I get asked all the time, Hey, how do I start my career like you did? Now, one caveat to that, I did this 50, 60, 70 hours a week for quite a long time until I made an agreement with a customer that took some of the workload off of me. I made a reduced amount for that customer, but still made quite a bit of money. But then I got into YouTube. YouTube ended up taking off really, really successfully for me. Now, again, my most successful year I've ever had on YouTube pales in the comparison to this year but I completely reduced my lifestyle to be able to afford more hours in a day to do whatever I wanted to do rather than trying to figure out how to charge more and make more to support the things that I had. So I don't do it anymore and I highly encourage you guys whittle down the thinking of you must work 100 hours a week, 100 hours a paycheck, suck up all the overtime you possibly can, work for yourself, become your own boss, make a decent amount of money, and try to only work 15 to 30 hours a week at max. Hope you liked the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you have any of your own suggestions or comments, throw them down below. I'd love to hear about them, love to read them, and get out and fix something.